Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Denny Wood. It's about two miles to the southeast of Lyndhurst, just off the B3056. Um, today we're going to be doing a roughly four mile circular route to the south of here and along the way we'll be coming across uh, an Iron Age hill fort, uh, the remains of an ancient stag park, uh, a royal hunting lodge and a few other interesting things along the way. So do join us. Well as far as car parking is concerned for this walk between October and March, uh, you can park your car actually at the Dennywood campsite. But outside of uh, that period, uh, you'll need to use the Forestry Commission uh, car park at Matley Wood. It's about 800 yards to the north of here and then work your way down. Now I'm filming uh, still quite early spring, a little bit chilly in the morning. Logan's still got his fleece on, but the sun is making an appearance from time to time, so hopefully the light conditions will be okay and it won't be too windy. Well, before we sort of kick off into the, uh, the woods, as it were, right by the uh, Dennywood campsite car park, there are the remains of a royal hunting lodge. Now, as regular viewers will know, we've come across a few of those over the years. Um, some are easier to find than others. This one is quite easy to find. I said, by the car park there's a little um, track that leads off a gate so let's see if we can uh, find it today here we are I say we're heading in a sort of westerly direction and yeah here we go I'm looking for the earthwork remains basically of a structure that's about well it's a sort of rectangular in shape and I would say it's about 40 meters by 35 meters and yeah I can just make out some some banking here this is the sort of north west corner hopefully you can make that out and these hunting lodges they were well Edward III built a few of them dotted around the new forest in the 14th century and they were basically temporary accommodation for noblemen and royalty for when they were out hunting and they would have been wooden structures with slate roofs so those have long gone and all that remains is the banking earthworks that was surrounded the building just really to keep out wildlife and vagabonds but you can quite easily make out the uh, the banking still. Well, this lodge is called on a map Church Place, although there was never a church here. In the dim and distant past, when folk came across earthworks that they were unsure about, they'd often give them you know, place names such as a, a church and what have you. Often in the mistaken belief that it had something to do with the time of William the Conqueror when he was created the new forest it was thought that he just decimated entire villages although historians today suggest that uh, that didn't actually happen what's interesting about this place though a few years ago I think it was 2016 2017 some archaeologists came here and did some work and they dug eight or nine trenches and they couldn't find any bits of slate and they couldn't find any post holes where you know the wooden posts would have gone in so there's never actually any evidence that there was a building here but obviously something was here otherwise the earthworks wouldn't have been here well we're now heading south leaving the car park and on my right is the Denny enclosure established in 1860 mainly beech and oak with a few conifers I'll tell you what there's some fantastic shaped trees in there now for regular viewers I'm trying a different bit of equipment today I upgraded my gimbal 
so uh, it means I can mount my microphone or the microphone receiver on it. It's quite heavy and it's got a mind of its own, so we'll see how we go. continuing to, to head south about, I don't know, 800 yards or so further south from the car park. If you look on an ordnance survey map, you'll see something called a, a stag park on the left of here. And there were three of these stag parks. They were created in the 17th century. One here, one at Rhinefield, and one at the Highland Watering Enclosure. And they were used to enclose um, red deer. Now, I've tried to see if I could see the boundary bank. I couldn't find anything. Um, just looking out over there, if you look on a Google Earth map, you can actually make out uh, banks on the, on the eastern side. But uh, I think... Um, <laughs> All I'll do, if I say vaguely, it's out there somewhere. Well, we're just coming up to cycle post 296. And that track there is the one that we'll be coming back on. Now, I promise you one thing today. <laughs> if you do follow this walk, it's impossible to get lost because effectively we're going to be following a cycle track most of the way. And we've just come off... Uh, a little tarmac bit but it'll be track from from now on so obviously you need to bear in mind there are cyclists about and in the summer months this area can get quite uh, quite busy so that's where we'll be coming back but on the outward journey we're just going to carry on this little road for a little bit longer although it says access to private properties only it is uh, part of the cycle track a squirrel has been spotted in front of that tree. <laughs> He'll outrun you, I'm afraid, Logan. There's no point even trying. <laughs> Come on, fella. Oh, this interesting looking structure here, it looks like a Second World War bunker, doesn't it? But in fact, it's just a, a water tank. There are a couple here. There's just uh, oh, there's one over to the left which looks a little bit disused. One of them uh, is used for the two properties that are just over the other side there, and I think one of them used to be for the campsite. Uh, there's the pretty uh, Denny Lodge, originally a groom keeper's house, and then it became a head forester's residence. Just panning round. Still a bit early for some of the deciduous trees to have leaves. And then this cottage on the left, that's um, Denny Cottage. So the track has now become a, a gravel track. And we're now going to be entering the magnificent uh, Denny Lodge enclosure, which is a massive woodland area. It's got to be well over 200 hectares. And this is post 301. And this is where we head right, heading uh, westwards. But I'm going to do a little detour of about a mile and a half or so, because there's a couple of things I want to show you to the south. So if you want to do that, I'll put the map up for that on screen now. Well, this is about as far south as I'm going to go, nearly as far as the railway line. And just by me here is a pony pound, which um, regular viewers will have seen these before. And this is quite a large one, used, of course, primarily for the um, annual pony drift, when uh, the roundup of ponies, but uh, does get used at other times of the year as well. Okay, well, I mentioned the railway line. There's a bridge there. We do 
actually go down the side of it so we don't um, we're not going to cross the bridge but seeing as it's there let's have a peep over the top and here we go so that's looking westwards and this is the main southwestern line from London Waterloo all the way to Weymouth so just getting my bearings the next station in that direction must be Brockenhurst and then panning round looking uh, eastwards and the next station in that direction is Bewley Road so we're now going to head um, basically on the left hand side of this track because there's something quite interesting I want to show you well this little section that I'm on now I must admit is a little muddy and moist <laughs> because we're actually off the uh, off the cycle track but uh, it's a lovely open area we've got this uh, the woodland on my left and if I just slowly pan the camera around you can see where we're heading so uh, a nice uh, little open area for Logan to let off some steam and you can see there's the railway track behind the fence on my right We're still making our way along that sort of open area and come across this sweet enchanting little pond just by me here on uh, my left. Now it looks a bit wintry at the moment but in the summer those reeds will be up and uh, there's some lilies out there and you might be asking yourselves well why is there a pond out here in the middle of nowhere because it's man-made well, the answer for that is about 400 yards further on. <laughs> well, I've come to the thing that I wanted to show you. If you look on a, a Google aerial map of the area around here, you might see something that looks like a, well, a mini motorating circuit with a, a long straight and a couple of loops either end. And indeed, if you were passing by on a train and looked out the window, you'd be able to spot it. And it's just right by me here. Now, you can see there's a loop over there. And then if I just gradually pan round, you'll see the straight bit there. So what's it all about? Well, back in the 1950s and 60s, the Forestry Commission decided to upgrade a lot of their forest tracks. And they needed to find out what was the best mix of surface, how much clay, um, sand and gravel to use. So what they did here was they built this just long straight bit and just tested different types of mixes and they would get a lorry and literally drive up and down and up and down to find out the effectiveness and of course the loops at each end which are made of concrete were there so that the lorries could turn around and the clay dug up well back from that uh, clay pit just 400 yards the other way so hence that's why the pond is there so there you go well, right next to that, um, uh, Forestry Commission testing area is a pedestrian crossing across the railway track. And the white building there is an old railway building, I believe. Well, see, it's got Woodfordley Crossing, the old railway signs at London and South Western Railway Company. Just panning around, that's where we've uh, come down. 
And I was reading somewhere recently that uh, I think in the Second World War there was a, a railway siding either on this side of the track or the other side where they used to unload tanks and supplies as part of the, um, the D-Day preparations. Okie doke, well we're now going to start heading uh, northwards again and uh, make our way back to the original route. <laughs> Lovely day to be out. It is. It's a treat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Have a good ride. Thank you. Well, we've made our way back to cycle post number 301, back on the original route. And we're just about to go into the Stubby Copse enclosure which was established in 1829. Although it's thought there was a, a medieval copse here way back in 1565. So it's heading uh, westwards and I'm going to keep my eyes peeled looking out for an Iron Age hill fort. Well, I think this is the uh, fort over here. So I'll just see if I can make my way. It's just I don't know, 20 yards to the north of the, the gravel track. And what's fascinating about this fort is that it was only discovered as recently as 1982 by a chap called David Stagg. So it doesn't actually appear on not only old maps, but even Ordnance Survey maps. And uh, about four and a half acres, oval shaped. And yeah, I can definitely make out a bank just here it's about i don't know three or four meters high and there would have been a palisade on top at some stage but it's definitely not a um an enclosure boundary bank but it goes off in a fairly straight line along there oh i'm glad we found it we're now in the park hill enclosure it's a lovely time of year to to come because uh, you know with no leaves on the trees you can see much deeper into the woods and enjoy some of the shapes that uh, they make. It really is quite delightful. What an exquisite little pond that's part of a stream ether eyes or ether ease gutter not quite sure how you pronounce it eventually flows out into the Lymington River. But, uh, what a lovely spot to sit and rest for a while. Not far from cycle post 286 <laughs> for reference purposes. <laughs> We've uh, just been met by two lovely ladies, one of them by the name of Trish, I believe her name was, and they recognised uh, both me and Logan from our of YouTube channel, in fact they've been watching a few of the videos uh, recently, so fame at last. <laughs> well just next to cycle point 285 we've got the entrance to the Frohawk ride. And there is a little information board just here, I'll put it up on screen for you to read, but basically it was dedicated in memory of a chap called Frederick Frohawk who often visited here to look for butterflies. We actually have been down here when we did the Brockenhurst walk. So uh, if you've not seen that one, do check it out. But we're not gonna go down there. Instead, if I just slowly pan round, we're gonna carry on heading north, very much on the homeward leg, back to our starting point. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, Give us a thumbs up or a like and do make a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a super walk today. Really, 
<laughs> fresh and spring-like. The sun has been in and out all morning, but it's been great to be out nonetheless. Well, until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.